I'm Dr. Abhishek Mangeshika, and today we're going to discuss cervical cancer, a condition that affects thousands of women worldwide every year. Cervical cancer is a significant health concern, but with early detection and proper treatment, it is highly preventable and treatable. In this video, you'll uncover everything you need to know about cervical cancer, including its causes, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment options, and prevention strategies. Whether you're looking for information for yourself or to help someone you care about, this video will provide you with the knowledge you need to make informed decisions. Cervical cancer is a type of cancer that occurs in the cells of the cervix, the lower part of the uterus that connects it to the vagina. Most cervical cancers begin in the cells on the surface of the cervix and can spread to other parts of the body if not detected and treated early. There are two main types of cervical cancer, squamous cell carcinoma. This is the most common type, accounting for about 70 to 90% of cervical cancer cases. It develops in the thin, flat cells lining the outer part of the cervix. Adenocarcinoma. This type is less common, originating in the glandular cells that produce mucus in the cervical canal. While these are the most common types, there are other rarer forms of cervical cancer that may behave differently and require different treatment approaches. The primary cause of cervical cancer is infection with the human papilloma virus, or HPV, a very common sexually transmitted infection. While most HPV infections clear up on their own, persistent infection with high risk strains, particularly HPV 16 and 18, can lead to the development of cervical cancer over time. Other risk factors that can increase the likelihood of developing cervical cancer include smoking. Women who smoke are at a higher risk of developing cervical cancer. The chemicals in tobacco can damage the DNA of cells in the cervix, making it harder for the body to fight off HPV infections. Women with weakened immune systems, such as those with HIV or AIDS, are more susceptible to HPV infections and therefore at a higher risk of cervical cancer. Studies have shown that using birth control pills for an extended period can slightly increase the risk of cervical cancer. Women who have had three or more full-term pregnancies have a higher risk of cervical cancer, possibly due to hormonal changes and immune system alterations during pregnancy. A family history of cervical cancer can also increase a woman's risk, suggesting a genetic predisposition to the disease. Cervical cancer often does not cause noticeable symptoms in its early stages, which is why regular screening is so important. However, as the disease progresses, symptoms may begin to appear including irregular vaginal bleeding. This can include bleeding between periods after sexual intercourse or even after menopause. Unusual vaginal discharge. A watery, bloody discharge that may be heavy and have a foul odor is another symptom. Pelvic pain. Pain during intercourse or discomfort in the pelvic region not related to other causes can be a sign of cervical cancer. In more advanced stages, the symptoms can become more severe, such as increased vaginal bleeding. This heavier and more frequent bleeding can indicate that the cancer has progressed. Chronic pelvic pain, such as persistent pain in the pelvis, lower back or legs, may suggest the spread of cancer to the surrounding tissues. Urinary and bowel problems, such as difficulty urinating, blood in the urine, constipation, or changes in bowel habits can occur if the cancer spreads to the bladder or bowel. Early detection of cervical cancer significantly increases the chance of successful treatment. Screening is crucial and there are a few key methods used to detect cervical cancer. Pap smears. This test collects cells from the cervix to detect precancerous or cancerous changes. It's recommended that women begin regular pap smears at age 21 or within three years of becoming sexually active. HPV testing. This test detects the presence of high-risk HPV stains that are known to cause cervical cancer. It is often done in conjunction with a pap smear. If any abnormalities are found, further diagnostic procedures may be necessary, like a colposcopy. If a pap smear result is abnormal, a colposcopy may be recommended. This procedure involves using a special magnifying device to examine the cervix more closely and take biopsies if needed. A biopsy involves removing a small sample of cervical tissue to be examined under a microscope for cancerous cells. If cervical cancer is confirmed, imaging tests such as CT scans, MRIs or PET scans may be used to determine the extent of the cancer and where it has spread. Cervical cancer is staged based on the extent of the disease, which helps determine the appropriate treatment plan. Stage zero, also known as carcinoma in situ, precancerous changes that may not have spread beyond the surface layer of the cervix. Stage one is when cancer is confined just to the cervix. Stage two is when the cancer has spread beyond the cervix 
to the upper part of the vagina or nearby tissues but has not reached the pelvic wall. Stage 3 is cancer that has spread to the pelvic side wall, the lower part of the vagina or has caused kidney problems. Stage 4 is cancer that has spread to nearby organs such as the bladder and the rectum which is stage 4a or to distant organs like the lungs and the liver which is stage 4b. The treatment of cervical cancer depends largely on the stage of the disease and other individual factors. Here is an overview of common treatment options. Early cervical cancers such as stage 1. Surgery is often the primary treatment for early stage cervical cancer. Options include a radical hysterectomy which involves removing the uterus, cervix and surrounding tissues or a trachelectomy which removes the cervix but preserves the uterus which is a fertility sparing surgery. Radiation therapy. Radiation may be used in conjunction with surgery or as a standalone treatment if surgery isn't an option. Locally advanced cervical cancers, which is stage 2 and 3. Chemo radiation. This treatment combines chemotherapy with radiation therapy and is the standard approach for treating locally advanced cervical cancer. Brachytherapy. This is a type of radiation therapy where a radioactive source is placed directly into or near the tumor to deliver targeted radiation. In this case, it is placed into the vagina. Advanced cervical cancer or stage 4. Chemotherapy is used to control symptoms and prolong life in cases where the cancer has spread to distant organs. Targeted therapy, where drugs like Avastin can be used alongside chemotherapy agents to target specific pathways that cancer cells use to grow and spread. Newer treatments that help the immune system recognize and attack cancer cells are currently under study in clinical trials and offer hope for more effective treatment options. Prevention and early detection are key to reducing the incidence and impact of cervical cancer. The HPV vaccine is one of the most effective ways to prevent cervical cancer. It's recommended for girls and boys starting at ages 11 to 12, but can be given up to the age of 26 or even up to 45 depending on individual circumstances. The vaccine protects against the high-risk HPV strains that cause most cervical cancer cases. Regular pap smears and HPV tests are essential parts of routine healthcare for women particularly those aged 21 to 65. Following the recommended screening guidelines can help catch precancerous changes early when they are most treatable. Using condoms can reduce the risk of HPV infection, thereby lowering the overall risk of cervical cancer. Living with cervical cancer can be challenging, both physically and emotionally. It is important to have a strong support system and access to resources that can help you manage the journey. A cervical cancer diagnosis can bring a range of emotions including fear, anxiety and uncertainty. Seeking support from mental health professionals, support groups or counselling services can help you navigate these challenges. For women who wish to have children after treatment, fertility preservation options such as egg or embryo freezing should be discussed before treatment begins. Some treatments can affect fertility so it's important to explore all options. After treatment, regular follow-up care is essential to monitor for any signs of recurrence. Include regular pap smears, imaging tests and checkups with your healthcare provider to ensure that any new developments are caught early. Cervical cancer is a serious but very preventable and treatable disease when detected early. By understanding the causes, recognizing the symptoms and adhering to regular screening guidelines, we can significantly reduce the impact of cervical cancer. Well, if you made it to the end, thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and leave a comment below with any questions or experiences you'd like to share. By staying informed and supporting one another, we can help improve the lives of those living with cervical cancer.